Mm. Yes, honey. Listen, I just want to say one thing. Is it me or does Sanjay and JJ need to stay out of grown people business? Sammy, what you think? I'm going to give Sanjay a pass, but JJ for sure needs to mind his. <laughs> he needs to mind he needs his to mind. business. He is always in other people's business doing team He's too much. Sammy, you okay? <laughs> <laughs> if y'all heard anybody choking, that was not so Gucci on the flow. That was <laughs> one of I our newest co-hosts on this platform. <laughs> yeah, we can all hear you, baby. We can all hear you. Everybody, that's why I bust out laughing. Um, that was Sammy. Welcome to the show, Sammy. Yay! Yay. How are Rip you? Plastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here now. Yeah, I'm I'm good. How you doing? I'm all right. And Asia, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. All right. My name is Chase, and this is uh, the Bell Collective episode seven, season three review. Um, I want to encourage you guys to like and subscribe to the channel. I also want to give a shout out to our other co-host, Shantae. She's not in, but she will be back with us on the next episode. Um, and we're gonna move right along with our bombastic review. But before we do. Sammy, you have just binge watched all the way from season one to season uh, three, as we are now. And so I'm going to do a quick round, what you call pump it or dump it. I'm going to just okay. pull a girl up. So you're going to say pump it, meaning you give two <laughs> thumbs up, or dump it, meaning no God, no ma'am, no no God, Miss Quad. Starting with Akeisha. Pump it or dump it? Uh, I'm a pump it. Okay. You ain't asking me. So I'm a Gucci. pump it. Well, see, I didn't know we could do that because then this go for Akeisha. Go ahead, just Akeisha. So, eh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's for Akeisha, right? Yeah. So what about So Gucci? So Gucci, she can, she can go. Okay. She can get a pump. All right. Pump it. Okay. What about? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Long show. <laughs> oops. <laughs> for that. Too. Am I in the right show? Production. No, you're not. I'm not either. I have been sabotaged, honey. Bamboozle, baby. Ooh, wink and bamboozle. The people that got rid of the, the thing. Well, I don't have my other, so I'm just going to ask you about this one, who we're definitely going to talk about. What about Marie, Mon Marie Monroe? I have grown to love Marie. I so was you started off not a fan? I because I even told Chase like in the promo, every, every promo she just a mad face. She just looked like she ready to pop a bitch every time you see her. So, <laughs> but the, that's the good thing about the show, the way that the format, the way it's done, you get enough of her personal life aside from just the group. So you kind of understand not not just about a lot of her badass habits, but you understand why she is the way she is. So I, I, I roll with Marie. She get a she get a pump. Okay, um, Latrice. Ooh. Latrice. Sammy, no, he liked Latrice. He got to stop playing. No, no, no. This is the thing. I, I I was rolling with Latrice up until maybe these last two or three episodes. That's what happened. Latrice ca caught me off guard. Asia, I got to I tell the truth about Tracy. <laughs> Tracy caught me off guard. Uh, Latisha, the, in my opinion, Queen B, Latisha. We love Latisha. We love Latisha. Okay. Uh, did, is there anyone else that I missed? No. Okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead and start right on when I bombastic review. We're still at the Christmas. Say. Do we? Oh, Tamra Sheree. <laughs> That's what I damn know. I was being serious. No, oh, my Sheree. God. I, know you was I really was being serious. I forgot. No shade, Tamra. Um, because we okay. know that the people over there at the Bell Collector, they watching. We know y'all watching. Um, <laughs> so no shade to Tamra Sheree. I'm going to shade you a little later, but not right now. Um, Sammy Pump it or Dump it. Mm, I have no vote. And I'm disappointed yeah. with Tamara because I was not expecting her to be that girl of this show. Mm, we're gonna get into that, it. That, that caught me way off left field. Mm. 
Ooh, that was well, funny. make sure you guys like and subscribe, whether you agree with Sammy's commentary or not. <laughs> um, and we're going to move right along with everything. Uh, so we're still at the Christmas parade, and the conversation gets even more awkward as Sanjay feels that So Gucci was not only disrespectful, but she also wonders why So Gucci walked up to Tambra Sharif if she had on, no intentions on speaking to her mother, Selena, who was talking with Tambra Sharif at the time. So Gucci feels that the attack may be warranted, excuse me, Sanjay feels that the attack may be warranted after dealing with disrespect for so long from So Gucci. Uh, so Gucci says, you know, this deal doesn't just really warrant her being physically assaulted by Selena. Sanjay is not budging on how she feels about the situation. And um, she feels like the whole thing could have been avoided. When Reach tries to lighten up the mood and asks uh, Sanjay how she feels about Star's newest baby. And so Gucci says that she hasn't seen him yet either. And it gets even more awkward. So we just wrapped it up really quickly. I mean, I'm telling you what. Those are the tough conversations as a family you have to have. But the reason why I asked or made the comment earlier about Sanjay staying out of grown folk business is because although she seems very emotionally in tune with Selena, it is two people here um, in their relationship with one another. So it does not appear to me that she looks to see anything from so Gucci's side. She's not really receptive to anything. So then if that's the case, maybe you're not emotionally equipped to have this conversation at this time in my opinion and i don't think that um she was fair really to so gucci now um does that mean that so gucci is some innocent ass victim cynthia no she's not however um you have to be fair in situations like this and i don't think that with the emotional connection to her mother of course that being her mother plus <clears throat> just other variables sanjay's not equipped to do that and um, so Gucci got to start taking accountability for that mouth. That mouth is what got you popped, so Gucci. That mouth is what got you. And I, I'm going to say it now that we've been so far removed from it. I feel like Selena probably was looking for a fight. And that's that. I ain't changing that. Selena was looking for a fight? Selena. Yes. I think so. I just, Asia, I just, go ahead. Well, go ahead, Sammy. But Asia, no, no, that's how I feel. Go ahead, Asia. That's how I feel right now. I don't. Okay, I agree with what you just said, but that's just her mama. So I don't think that she's ever going to be equipped for that conversation because that's my mama. And in her head, this lady didn't put her hands on her mama. That's mm -hmm. that's all she see. That's all she ever going to see. There's no, that's never going to change. If the same situation happens again, it's not going to change. I don't know how I feel about what you just said, though. Like uh, she was looking for a fight. I don't know because who went I can't even remember at this point who went up to who first. Um, so Gucci went up to speak to Tambra and she was walking off and Selena stopped her from walking off. Okay, yeah, then maybe she was looking for a fight, but not a physical fight. She, <laughs> she was looking for she was looking for some camera time. Some camera time, yes. An extra. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm, very extra. Uh, well, how do you feel about her, Sammy? Yes, get into it. Sam. So, uh, honestly, I when s hearing all the commotion, I initially thought that I was going to be on Selena's side just because I guess it was like a bias from watching her back on Bring It. However, taking it back to Sanjay, like I get why she's involved as her mama. I, I I get that, but I do think that she, um, you know, they they have their own story. I guess based on what they like. Uh, so Gucci has said in the previous episode that Selena had kind of been putting in their head that she had been speaking negatively about her, so she already has her mind set. I do think, like, I was joking about JJ earlier, like, he needs to be involved, but I do think he should be more, um, he needs to try to get it, like, so Gucci can't talk to those girls, those are your girls, you need to speak to them. I do think Sanjay was wrong, though, because she was saying, why would you go over there if you know that y'all weren't speaking? Tambra, in the midst of a conversation with Selena, as they were talking about so Gucci, kind of signaled to so Gucci to come over there, which she came and spoke to her, and as she's leaving, Selena tapped on the shoulder like she's the only, she's the only girl you see here. If y'all have been in the room together several times and y'all never spoken, why all of a sudden What's you expect woman to speak to you now? So to me, that's why it seemed like she was picking. Like, what did you expect to get from her, from grabbing her back to come to you? And she's the only person you've seen. Like, y'all were just at a whole baby shower. You didn't speak. You said you were so busy. Selena was picking. Sanjay, I don't know. She wasn't privy to that because she wasn't there in the moment. But I just don't. I don't. I don't fault so Gucci. Yeah, her mouth. She she said her mouth is a problem. 
but none of that mouth would have never happened had Selena let that girl walk away and go on to what she was trying to do in the first place. You start picking with her. So of course, bitch, I'm finna talk shit to you. You know, you know we don't fuck with each other. So why are you bothering me? So this is what you finna get. You said something interesting that it was actually Tambra Sheree who um, signaled so Gucci over um, while she was in the midst of the conversation. Girl. As they're talking about her, yes. Do you think, because everybody knows by now, Carlos knows, the internet knows, y'all know, the viewers know, <laughs> everybody knows that I feel like Latrice um, set this up. But with Tambra signaling her over there, do you think Tambra was in on it? I don't think any of them thought that was going to happen. What it may have been was maybe, you know, when you're speaking to somebody, y'all happen to be talking about them, so you're looking that way, and the person happened to look that way too. So it's, oh, hey, she wasn't expecting, but I, I just, it, I don't think anybody is at fault but Selena and so Gucci. I, I still don't think Latrice set it up, but I just feel like, had. Well, Selena, let me be very clear, Sammy. When I say set up, and I want to be clear for the viewers as well, when I say set up, what I mean is set up for them to have some sort of a verbal altercation. I'm not saying the fight was a setup at all. So I want to be very clear. Right. I do not think that Latrice wanted them to fight, but there is a picture. I, I wish I would have uploaded that damn picture. There is a picture of um, Latrice. Wait, you yeah, the one I sent you, peeping them fighting. And she was like, very good, bitch, very good. They wanted right. it to happen. There's no tea, no shit. No, I just, I just, I don't. I get Latrice and Tamara both have been doing some shady stuff, but in that situation, me and that they have been around these girls in the same room together and there was no conflict, I don't think they expected for it to be conflict this time. The only difference is what, the cameras? So I don't I don't know, maybe that, maybe they knew the cameras would, would shake something up, but I don't think that they expected any of that to happen. Maybe a couple, you know, a little shade fest or some words exchange. Yes, I agree with but you. But I don't think that they expected it to get to that those type of heights but I, I mean i hate to say it but i agree with so gucci like we don't speak any other time you want to speak nasty because the camera's here i'm not doing no extra i'm not doing it no i'm not doing no extra do you I'm think that was mean sammy it was mean but it was what it was like girl we, actually if, if we see each other you know we don't like each other and all of a sudden we here filming my show and now you want to grab my arm and now you want to have a conversation with me you don't want to talk to me no other time girl you being you're an extra no ma'am no thank you i'm not interested Okay. She should let Sophia. Yes, Shantae, Sophia, Shantae, Sophia whoever, whatever her name is, she should let her just go ahead on about her business like she was trying to do. So you say you also agree you didn't think it was gonna get fit. Like I don't, you don't think that they meant for it to get this. I don't think no. I don't think that no. Now now, so Gucci was the one who said she was initially the one who said this this bitch finna get a drink in her face. Like she was going there. So Gucci was going there. But I mean, can you fault her? Like you, you, you're picking with me, girl. You, mind you, we've had these all conversations off camera. We've had these table conversations with the family, mm -hmm. and you tell your daughters I'm saying things about you. What, what do you want to speak to me for? Like, leave me alone. So I'm not mad at Sogucci well, for being, you know, from, for going. Well, wait a minute. Now I am a little upset at Sogucci, Sammy, about that. Only because I'm of the firm belief I got to be as consistent as I was. If we go all the way back to Candace, don't sell wolf tickets. Don't write checks that your ass can't cash. And that mouth gonna get you popped. So when you say you're gonna throw a drink and show me what's up then, bitch, her word's not mine. Y'all know we don't cuss no more on the lean. Her word's not mine. Then baby, you better be ready. Cause like I said last week, last week, um, Selena, Mike Tyson is not the one. And uh, she found out. You yes, gotta be careful with that mouth. You can't be doing I'm that. Not, I'm not saying she didn't get the reaction that was more than warranted. Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm not mad at her for being frustrated and saying, bitch, what you wanna do? You, you know, <laughs> whether she was ready to get her ass whooped or not, that's a whole nother conversation. I'm, I'm ready to go to war for it. I'm ready to die about it. It's, yeah. it's really a hundred percent a put it on the flow situation. Like, that what's up? Like, that song was written for the scene, literally. Yeah, put it on the flow. That's definitely somebody needs to make a super cut of that to put it on the flow. <laughs> Maybe Latrice. Oh, there, there you go. Woo, Jesus. Asia, look at Latrice. No, yeah, look at her. No, Asia. No. No, nah, she wanted that to happen. Come on, dog. Come on, dog. All right, we're going to move right the hell on. But yeah, we, we on to you. You think you nickel slick, Latrice, but I got your penny changed, baby. Penny changed. And I hate to say that because I liked Latrice. And, you know, even though I felt like what she did in retaliation to Marie way back in the day was a little too far for my liking, I couldn't come for her for it because Marie came for her and tried to ruin her business first. So, you know, but this time... 
Yeah. I'm sorry, love. I'm, I'm not rocking with it this year. I'm not rocking with it this season. All right, you guys. Let's move right along. So Tambra is working at the station and uh, discusses that podcast yet again. Just do it at this point. I don't do it, girl. I'm tired of hearing about it. Tambra is still taken aback by Damon, a.k.a. Greedy. So when we start saying greedy, you know, we're talking about Damon because I like to say greedy. So uh, greedy saying that all she do is sit in the chair and not actually work. And on behalf of us up here in the lean, I want to let you know, Greedy, that that's a bunch of bullshit because we clock in, we tired, we got a lot going on, we got cheering, we got spouses. We got some of we got spouses, some of us, it's a, it's a, it's a. I got cheering. You you guys are my cheering. Sometimes and, um, spouses the child too, it, it, it go. <laughs> okay. But how dare you, Greedy? That's some bullshit because this is work, okay? Um, she feels that they have a big problem and he doesn't, the, and that she doesn't, I don't know what that was. Um, basically, they're having problems, and the fact that they're not engaged at this moment is completely fine with her because she's actually side eyeing the whole relationship. Um, uh, surprise. Surprise. Tampa has embryos that are frozen, and she knows for sure she's going to use them in the future. Is Tambra Cherie self sabotaging a relationship? I need to know. So initially when all that chaos was going on, they were saying, is it real? Is it fake? Is it for show? My whole thing was, I mean, how much more can they show? Like he's on TV kind of declaring his love for this woman. Now watching this particular episode, it's like, I don't know. Did she really want the man or did she just want to feel, did she want the, the, the fairy tale, like the idea of my parents like him, I want kids, we can do the embryos. I don't know what she wants, like self, and then you moved in with him, or if she really did move in with him, hell, I don't know. But what was the purpose? And and that quick, like two months later, you're all of a sudden it's like I don't know. I think she needs to be honest and say that she wants that goddamn ring. She wants to be engaged. She wants to be a fiance. He's not moving quick enough for us, and now she's just like I'd rather just go ahead on to the next one or to whatever else, or maybe just I'm gonna dive back into my career since marriage is not gonna happen, which is kind of why they broke up in the first place, isn't it? Yes. So. It was either that or kids. Well, she he said that she. I think it was D, all the above. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's it's just repeating itself, and I don't know. She seems like a very smart woman. You moved in without the range. You think that you moving in was going to kind of rush it? No, girl. You now you just he's comfortable now. She. Just, I don't know about Tambra, to be honest. Mm. The jury's out on Tambra. Um, Asia, you have anything you want to add, or you want to move on? move on from her Ooh. all like right greedy. you guys <laughs> <laughs> I, I better move on greedy huh how about that okay. uh, if he, <laughs> she don't want to have your baby greedy i do uh, <laughs> y'all are ridiculous <laughs> anywho so we get to catch up with maria and one thing that they're very intentional about doing is giving maria a good balance because if it wasn't for scenes like this She'd be most hated. Um, and it also kind of reminds me of a little bit of a Kenya, right? Where Kenya was like wreaking havoc on the whole entire, entire cast. And then they would show scenes with her aunt or scenes with like, you know, she wants to have a baby and this and this and that and all these things about her mom. And it's like, how can you yeah, hate this woman even though- those scenes make Kenya likable, whereas this, these scenes make Marie- there, Yeah, there's, I get what Chase is saying, but it, it, there's, is a, there's a- It's difference. difference. There are differences, I'm sorry, but it, I'm saying in the same vein, in the same vein. Yeah. I'm trying mean, to humanize her a little bit, in my opinion, I think. I don't know. You guys? I, I just, I, I don't. Uh, well, let's just go ahead and get into the scene and then we'll get into it. Yeah. All right, so Marie is going to a therapist as it's time for her finally to focus on herself. Growing up in a household where her mother's addiction to weed turned into weed laced with cocaine really rocked her as a child. So um, eventually her dad couldn't lie to her, the children anymore. And she recalls crying and begging for her mom to uh, not to leave, but her mom chose the addiction. And you know, it's an addiction. Um, so there was nothing her mom could really do about that at the time. Um, Marie's grandmother is the one who taught her how to be a woman. Growing up watching drug dealers abuse their mom um, took a toll on her, but she instead focused on her studies. While focusing on her studies, interestingly enough, catch this, she was bullied incessantly in school by her peers, and Marie quickly grew to have a no-tolerance zone for bullies and learned how to fight back. 
Um, mm -hmm. And she would get them before they got her. Mm -hmm. She values friendships so much that when she's betrayed, she doesn't handle it well. She's asked if she thinks that she's controlling due to the lack of control in her childhood. And she says that she's a fighter and she wants to be successful. But if you notice, she didn't answer that question. Um, she's um, advised to close her bank account as it stems from childhood abandonment and to, and I'm going to advise her to keep working with this lady because at first I just thought this lady was not going to like ask the right questions, but she totally asked the right question about control. And to me, it seems like she may be a good fit for Marie because you can't be, Marie's so aggressive that you can't really be aggressive back and expect to yield results. Maria's gonna to have to be the type of person that says it out loud a couple of times until it clicks. So when she's asking her those questions, Marie thought about it and she knew the answer, but she purposely stepped over it. So I think that this lady is all right as opposed to other TV therapists that we've seen that have not been that great. Mm. I wanna say something before you guys start. I actually did not realize how much I relate to Marie because I was bullied. Um, I imagine my personality now, but imagine it in a four foot, a three foot nine, four foot two, whatever, you know, squeaky voice, 80 pound body. Yeah, like I was always me. I bullying you, Chase. You're so cute. Uh, I learned how not to be bullied. And yeah. I learned how to get the girls before the girls got me. Uh -huh. But when you're growing up in the 90s, most especially, and you know, you look, you look sweet on things, you look sweet on life. Um, even though I wasn't like out of the closet totally, you could tell that I, I like guys or whatever, but I just never, you know, I just, I waited until I graduated high school before I started dating. Anyway, um, there will be times where that will come up and I will be a little bullied over that. And eventually I would not take it until the point where it became like, oh my God, I know I'm getting these people before they get me, but am I the bully? Now, am I the bully? What's going on, girl? So I ask you, is Marie a bully? Oh, I got a quick question follow up for that. Yes. Were you physically like getting people before they got you or were you verbally getting people before they got you? The thing about both. me was I, I've only had one. I've only both. Had like, Say both. One, <laughs> both. I've only had a couple of fights. Now I'm not really, I don't really look, go around looking to beat nobody ass, right? If you try me, then you're gonna get what you get. Thankfully, I ain't had but so many fights and the ones that I had all won. So eventually people just did not bother me when yeah. it came to that. You get what I'm saying? Like, and my mouth was so bad that like, I could beat your ass verbally without me having to fight you. So I really didn't have to worry about that. But a couple of times that I did fight, luckily I won and I didn't have to worry about that much throughout, you know, growing up. So I don't know if that answers your question, but. Yes, because okay. it, it correlates to what I got to say, but I'll let Sammy go first. Okay. I think that Marie, do I think that she's a bully? I don't know if I want to use Tampa. Yeah, I, I was, uh, yeah, I don't want, I don't know if I want to say bully, but she is out, maybe the aggressor. She initiates a lot of things that don't have to, like, it doesn't have to be. And it's gonna eventually, it's gonna catch up with her in this group of girls, especially mm -hmm. based off this this episode we're reviewing. It's it's not it's gonna catch up with her. It's going to catch up with her, but I, I think that she needs because she said that once she had a child that her mindset changed, but it, it seems like now that he's older, it kind of reverted back, I guess, okay. because she's still, yeah, she's still she's still that girl that feels like she has to defend herself because she thinks that the people are gonna get hurt. Yeah, okay. What is it? A zebra don't change the stripes, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you could like somebody. I'll use Candace as an example, just in this. Candace, they were like, oh, she changed this last season on RHOP, but she didn't. She just hit it better. <laughs> because I'm going for it. Going off on uh, Robin and them, we saw it. And I was just like, well, I knew she ain't changed. Ain't nothing changed about her. She just hit it better because she didn't want to get that backlash. So with Marie, I personally don't think she's a bully. But I think that I, I know she's not a bully because she's going to therapy for the issue and confronting the issues that she has. So she may have bully behaviors because she has that PTSD or 
that get them girl, but I don't necessarily, I'm not going to call that bully. Maybe she's a bear poker, but she's a <laughs> poker, but she's not a bully. Okay. Okay. I'll give you poker. Uh-oh. Uh-uh, Sammy! No, uh -oh. I just, I can't, I feel like, she, can you be the bear poker when you're the bear? Like, I don't, I don't. I yes, because she bruised. So then if you're the bear, but wait a minute, if you're the bear and you also are the poker, and don't that damn make you a bully? I don't know. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what I said. She's the aggressor. She initiates a lot of bullshit. But I, I just, I don't see, because this is my thing. I know we'll talk about it later. Like, she would never start fucking with Tamara if Tamara never started lying on them. <laughs> I think it was, I keep calling them ugly that did her in. So. That's PTSD. That's not necessarily, bu it's bully behavior ish, but it's not a bully because. Somebody, only person we really see her start with was uh, she came from the tree. Retreats. <laughs> and that was at the beginning, but we, never, we hadn't seen it ever since then. Cause she also I got a question really quick, Asia. You mm -hmm. think it's cause she wanted the liquor box? Allegedly, I don't know. <laughs> Can you not do that? <laughs> Every single time <laughs> when Glenn okay. popped up at that damn apartment. I love, that is my favorite freaking scene ever. Let me just tell you something. Chase, when Chase started rapping and raving about this goddamn <laughs> show, that was one of the first clips he sent in the chat. And it was funny, but actually watching the episode and catching it in his whole context, when I say me and Steve were in here, it's like I had never seen it before. <laughs> the way that the Ray Marie hopped her ass up and Latisha looked back and hopped, then you got so Gucci scuffed, like it was kind of hairy. Wait, <laughs> no, but let me tell you who be taking me out. Every time I watch it, Sam, it's oh my God, it was, it was, uh, it was, <laughs> it was for me. Now it has become <laughs> Letitia begging and pleading with Glenn to stop without giving herself <laughs> up. That she is the reason why Glenn said, I'll stop to Maurice. Glenn, I told, I told Chase, Glenn, Glenn you're the one who pointed that out. I was like, oh. She been in that uh, pillow talking and told all this girl bitch and now, now Glenn in that lady. She's like, Glenn, you gotta stop. And me, did you see Marie how about the language? Glenn, Glenn, yeah, Glenn. Marie, Glenn, <laughs> Glenn. Come Everybody on, Glenn. calm down. Yeah, because it's your fault, ma'am. You've been told that man all this woman business. She almost got exposed. Oh my god, all of it. So, little so, from that, that chopper thing. I'm sorry. Asia, <laughs> yes, is, what's your favorite? Because that's one of my, I think that is hands down my favorite scene. From all of Bell Collective, outside of Marie showing up looking like um, Marie Bo Pete to the daggone thing. This is it. This is Marie Bo Pete. Oh my God. I love Marie Bo Pete. I love Marie Bo Pete. Um, but yeah, what is your favorite? Because that's my favorite, hands down. That has to be, I feel like that's up there. That's really up there as my favorite scene. And my other favorite scene, even though it's not like, Funny. Well, I, my favorite thing is when uh with the Kaylin or whatever was trying to act oh. like reverse racism was a thing, and they looking at her like, "Are you crazy?" That, that Asia, I thing. almost jumped through my TV. Remember, I was texting you like, "Girl, what?" what? I had to ask Chris. I was like, "When did this come out?" And when he told me, was like, "Wasn't Trump in office then?" What the mm. fuck do you mean? Y'all don't talk about us like that. Have you not been paying attention to anything? Yes, like, it anything? gave me Kim Zosie egg vibes. So I, I say that is my number one scene because it was like, girl, what are we talking about? Like, who was her great granddaddy? Huh? Her great granddaddy was who? Did she say uh, Thomas Jefferson? Thomas like, Jefferson. I'm like, girl, somebody, somebody with some slaves. Girl, Baby, they had no cracking up. Like I know it's not funny because the girl's stupid, like real stupid. But I was cracking up at that. Like she's crazy. Marie said, "You gonna get up out of here?" And then she up out of here. Well, come here, come here. Crazy. And with, that's when I kind of wasn't feeling Latrice. I'm like, girl, this is this is what you bring. That was Antoinette. Was that was Antoinette. Antoinette. That Antoinette. Oh, yeah. oh sorry, Antoinette. Yeah. Well, I forgot about. But well, Latrice was still hanging out with Antoinette. They were still, still the whole yeah. They mm -hmm. was a threesome, but yeah, girl, I was. Marie like, said, "Baby, this, I'm not your slave." I was like, "Is she saying this on TV?" Like, I was really just like, "What is going on?" I and was like, the cameras, dead ass. Because it was not what they was there for. <laughs> they were not there for that. What they were trying to build this street back, and it turned into <laughs> chaos. So to me, that was like a really, really good scene that mm -hmm. I like. That's like my number one that I always remember. Now this Glenn scene, Glenn popping up at the apartment. That's number. Oh my two. god. It's actually number one point five because baby, what? <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, I could not yeah, do it justice. That's why I said it was on her chest, and she was like, and <laughs> "What? Uh, what? So good to say, Glenn? This is not the way." 
You just you knew this. Oh my god! I could not do it justice, Sammy. I was trying to get y'all to be like. I'll be trying it, to get it, them it to does, watch like, stuff. In the clip, it didn't know, Judge. You have to have to know, like, the story and then cut it You have to know the backstory, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I'm the, I, so out of the three of us, I'm the only person who has been watching it watch from, it from the, beginning. the beginning, the inception. I lived yeah. last week. Yeah. When Chase was excited, I was so excited that Chase was excited about it. And I'm like, okay. Because, you know, I'm going to action, baby. You were like, and remember you were like, should I watch from the beginning? I'm like, you definitely have to watch season one. There's no, there's no, no way, way around that. I had to watch, watch that. Season, one. season two was uh, uh, to me, but season one, you got to watch that one. It's, it's but you see, because you said that I had really low expectations for season two, and I ended up liking that one too. <laughs> yeah. So. They added okay. that lady who called them ugly, and I think that's when I was like, I don't know. But you I know what? She it. has, she has, because as far as me, like, I love like the, the funny and the chaos, but I like when you get to see like a person's. Like, like their character and mm. i think she probably has my favorite one of my favorite scenes was, was i think it was the season finale of season two when they when the girl came and they and, and tamra left what's her name taisha taisha whatever taisha. Taisha. taisha and when she told us she was like now i'm not fooling with tamra but we say we're supposed to be you know protecting the collective if tamra's a part of the collective then this ain't it like i i, I live for shit like that when you you don't fuck with a bitch but you can still kind of be mm. real about the situation well, now, let me ask you this. Oh, we, we are so off track. We're going to move on to episode seven, you guys. But Sorry. just one quick question. And this is how we get down, y'all. Guys. <laughs> roll with us, baby, because this is how we roll, okay? And this collective, okay? Um, Sammy, bells. do you, okay? Because we are definitely bells. Sammy, do you think that Aikisha was so the collective and protect the collective because she was truly um, invested in making sure that none of the sisters are um affected by intruders or was it because she was looking to knock down Letitia from her spot in any means necessary necessary meaning that if I, Letitia won't protect her I will and I'll show you who the real queen bee is and who really running Ferris Street no I feel like but even if you look at her from this season and how she's moving with certain things I think that's just like her like I might not like you bitches but we can't let nobody else come out here. And, <laughs> she is high for Selena. Yeah, yeah, like I just, I just thinking about oh, even, um, even with Tamra now, like based on you know what we'll talk about later, you can kind of tell that she's still. And I also think that from watching the interview I sent you earlier, she's really like headstrong on, on this whole Ferris Street thing. So let's not fuck this up because I need to get this. We need to keep the platform for people can see what we're trying to do with this business because my money's invested in this. So if anything, yeah. she's trying to protect the whole Ferris Street rebrand. So. Them bitches that ain't got nothing to do with us, keep them up out of here before they really just tear it all down. Yeah, because that was bad. Okay, guys, let's move on. <laughs> Letitia meets with Sogucci and they discuss the fight. So Gucci says that Latrice doesn't feel bad about it and is bumping her guns in the street saying that So Gucci has finally been humbled. So Gucci says that Latrice, Cliff, and Selena probably are all in the bed together at this point, calling it an entanglement. Letitia says the collective is a sisterhood and um that's bent and they're not broken and so she's going to be hosting a peace treaty for all of the ladies to get together and hash out their issues um and then we move on to marie but before we get to marie very briefly i just want to add that so gucci i know you're mad at selena but if you're really interested in these children and you know making it right with the children you probably shouldn't say things about that like that about their mom i'm not saying it's just tricky because how do you fight back with someone and express your opinion with respect to children. You get what I'm saying? So either you're going to have to go ahead and go full Monty and say fuck them kids for a little bit, or you're going to have to just move on from it, chuck the deuce, and the next time we see you speak on Selena, it's hopefully at a family therapy session with a licensed therapist, not um, Fishback Braids JJ, because he is not the one to handle it. I ask you, is it fair game for um, so Gucci to uh, air that entanglement out on camera like that? Or like, do you feel, what do you think about everything that she said about Latrice and Selena and all of that stuff? You know what? If I'm just gonna just be like, just be honest, mm -hmm. yeah. I understand that she has to consider the children and this and the third, but 
she don't like the bitch. And we 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 can't just sit around and play like we don't know Selena ain't over there bad mouthing her. At, at what point is it, does she want to be a good person or do you want her to just look like the good person? Because if listen, I'm not fucking with your mama. And 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 this and y'all know I don't like your mama. It ain't nothing against y'all, but we're not finna act like it. We not finna just act like it's this. I'm not look, Gucci. If you want to ask Selena ass out every chance you get on this camera, as long as she's fucking with you. I stand behind you. Them kids, they, they clearly have formed their own opinion. They some grown ass 25 year old women, 20, however, they, they old enough to understand. I'm not mad. Like it's only so much. I'm not about keeping the peace for everybody else while I'm miserable. So y'all not going to be able to run me down and want me to just be the good person on camera while y'all doing all this shit behind my back. No, if y'all want to catch a, act a fool, then we just gonna all act a motherfucking fool. I'm not mad at some Gucci for it. I wish okay. it was different, but I understand that it's not. And I mean, that's it's just not. the thing. Asia? Put it on the flow. Oh, Lord. All right, let's move on. Classes or something, she if she don't she gonna gonna them girls, she kick it. I was like, girl, kick it in the face. Hi, y'all. Do something. Do something Put it on the flow. I feel like in that little scuffle, so Gucci was maybe trying to protect some image of not really fighting back, but baby, put it on the mm -hmm. flow. You can't do that. I don't, I don't like yeah, like Sammy said, I don't like your mom. I'm not gonna fake it. I think I would watch what I say on camera just to protect the entanglement was a little too far for me. Yeah, like I'm not gonna put like fake stuff out there at all, but I'm gonna be honest every single time. I don't like your mama. She tried me, she still want my man, whatever. Like, I'm gonna just say however I feel about that situation. I'm gonna be, I will be respectful around y'all when I'm talking to my husband or when I'm talking to my girls. I ain't got nothing for it. I mean, it, it, it's it, they could be mad. Y'all grown too, so y'all could yeah. choose not to like so Gucci if you want. Your daddy gonna choose her every single time because that's yeah, clearly day, he can make more kids, but that's the person he chose. So, oh, it's getting very Brian Manitis around here on the lane. And Make I sure mean, guys... I'm not saying that that's right or wrong. I'm just saying you could tell it's that a, that's it's a harsh reality at the end of the day. And the only thing that he's excited about is actually having a grandson. So that might get him to calm down a little bit. But he he, he goes to Gucci every single time. Every single time. And, and the damn daughter, she went off and got married and pregnant without even telling him. So we are we are we gonna just do one side of when it comes to considering feelings and stuff? Or are we just gonna do it all the way around? Well, they the children though. You know the children that's the they're, they're the grown ass people at this point. They are adults. They're very old ish. They're grown. I just want to say, you keep talking to me like this. I'm gonna have to put you on the floor. That's it. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, make sure you guys like and subscribe. We're gonna move on. We're gonna move quickly, quickly through these next couple of scenes so we can get to the meat and the potatoes. Okay. Um, Marie Marie meets with Aikisha, <clears throat> who she's building a bond with outside of Letitia. Um, so I'm sure that may be addressed soon. Um, and Aikisha makes it very clear that she misses Willie. And is sexually frustrated, and she could have kept that shit to herself. Mm -hmm. um, Marie tells Aikisha about her friend Taisha saying that Tampa was engaged to another man who isn't Demond. Marie meets with uh, a lady who told her that Tampa's fiance didn't know about Greedy until the first season aired um, as she began dating him. Marie doesn't take lying well at all, and so she is willing to continue meeting with outside sources in order to get the truth because she does not believe that she's going to get it from Tambra Sheree. Aikisha doesn't think that Tambra is lying about her relationship. And she also says that she never questioned uh, Tambra and her relationship with Greedy, but she wants to follow behind Letitia who questions everything that Tambra does. The fiance sent Marie pictures and she's going to meet with him soon. Um, Aikisha. That's how I know Aikisha ain't over it with Tisha. Because this lady just said he told you she was doing it. Unless you're scary. Which, I give you that if you're a little scary of, of, of this thing. I give you that. I give you that. I give you that. I, who wants Marie beating the ass? Nobody, right? But why don't you say in your confessional, Letitia and Marie, it's just you only have the smoke for Letitia. She really wanted that latest spot. So that's one thing for me. The other thing for me is the, the difference that I notice about Marie and the ladies on this show as opposed to like the Housewives of Atlanta or the Housewives in general. They're brought 
loads of information and in housewives world they rarely act on outside information unless your name is margaret joseph so that's all she ever does is add on outside information the rest of them the most they probably says i know plenty of things about you but i'm not going to bring that up or like how candy says i don't really bring up stuff if it's not on camera i don't really bring up the outside stuff and everybody kind of agrees to that that pat on this show they don't give a damn i'm gonna email marie and see if she use it next season is that doing too much like, this is why I'm asking you guys, is this lady a bully? Because you're going so far to prove Tambra Sharia a lie that you're willing to meet with like private investigators and this person and that person, and this person and that person. Is it that damn serious? No, I, I don't <laughs> like that she's doing that. I think it'd be different if Tambra, like I said, if, if I was Tambra, in this situation, you would get nothing but lies from me. I'm lying. Any question you ask me, I'm a lie. I'm going to make up a lie. Like, I'm going to start making everything up. Because why are you in my business like this? I blame Tamara because she volunteered a lot of her lies initially. But if you know this lady lies all the time, I'm not going to start bringing other stuff to you. Because I'm going to call you a liar no matter what. So if, if that's the case, then I know everybody on my cast is calling me a liar. I'm a lie. Tambra lie. Make some up, lie about everything because they don't like you at this point. It doesn't matter. Be the Lulu. Live in your delusion. This is your this is a great life, great space to be in. Lie. Marie, do what you do, but it's gonna make you look bad in the end. So if you wanna look bad, keep doing this, mainly because like what how candy is like, if it's not on this show, I'm not gonna bring it on. It's like Marie is looking for drama. And I think with this cast, you don't necessarily really have to look for it. It's there. Yeah, it's there. It's nothing that has to be, you don't have to bring nothing up. And you know this girl gonna lie to you. So you you definitely are being messy at this point. Um, I think that it's not a good look. I think when you start doing that, the friend if everybody starts to do that, the franchise can kind of go down because it gets into things not being authentic. So watch. Watch how you do that shit. That's what Shantae said. I'm sorry, Sam, really quickly. Shantae said last week that she felt that Marie produces a lot, is like a producer. And I didn't really like see it until this situation. I'm just like, why are you doing that? Go ahead, Sammy. Um, so to double back to Akisha, I do agree that I feel like she feels like I'm the I'm the girl from Jackson, I'm the one with the fairest street connections I'm supposed to be. The HBIC. So she definitely does want Letitia's spot. I can agree with that. I do think that she hammers it more to Letitia though when it comes to Tamara's because Tamara's always like, she don't be under Marie. Like Marie, that's one thing about her. She's straightforward with her. You know, if she didn't fuck with, she don't fuck with you. But So she's not really clinging on to Marie the way she's doing Letitia. And then you have Letitia over here, you know, second guessing her and going behind her back. So I think that's why Akisha's sticking it more to Letitia versus Marie. Because Marie hasn't really just, you know, been riding for Tamara like that. Now, when it comes to do I think Marie, is she doing too much? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because especially for a bitch who sat up on that couch on the first reunion and threw a fit because the way them girls was talking about her business and doing all that, because we have to remember that now you're doing this, you opening the door for them to come back and start doing stuff when, it, you know, towards you again. But I don't want to hear it this season, Sammy. Huh? I don't want to hear it this year. Yeah, she going to next year either. But <laughs> I I get why I get why she's doing what she's doing. I think she's just doing the wrong thing. Like you have Tamara has been caught up. I mean, she's trying to make them look like they lie. Like they she didn't want to be in the group with the girl, the text messaging group. She didn't want the girl to be a part of the show. She went back and told them the girl said she was ugly, and the girl saying she didn't say that. So I get Maurice feeling like, damn, this girl Tamara just she got all this shit just running. So let's let's expose her being a liar. I think that there are so many other ways. Like. Don't you have the text messages where, where she was saying she didn't want to be in the group with Akisha? Like, show that. Like, show things that, that are, you know, that you got your hands on already. You're bringing in these outside people. And it's, it's kind of going to be conflicting anyway because you're, you're saying it's a, a man she was engaged to. So now it's already like a battle of he say, she say. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I get you want to prove to her that she's a liar. You want to prove that to us, the viewers. But there's so many other ways that I think Marie can do that. Because what's the end game? She's a liar now what? That's you know, what I mean, and my thing is, as, as, as a viewer, I heard that shit goddamn liars. So <laughs> we know she lying, girl. We believe y'all. Yeah, I don't need no other proof. So what are, what are you trying to prove? Like, what, what now what? 
yeah, like what's the goal? What's the end game on that? I think you have to be careful when you start doing stuff like that because, like you said, it opens up the floodgates for everybody else to start doing it. Case in point, I'm sorry, I'm going back to other shows, but Monique is the one who originally started talking about other people's spouses on that. Other okay, show. and I want to thank everybody for joining us here tonight. On, <laughs> now that's all Giselle do. So I'm just, yeah. I'm just actually just showing the butterfly effect of it. Like, That's she, true, Asia. she originally did that Sherman stuff where it was like that was a little. Monique low. was nowhere around season one when they was up in Cherie's house looking for her husband, trying to figure out what was going. Okay, on. I didn't watch Who's season her? one, so I don't know yeah. nothing about that. But I'm you gotta watch season one to see why everybody hate her bad. But we're gonna wait. We're gonna move on because yeah, Giselle been trifling since day one, day sitting one. in this thing seat. Anyway, um, we're gonna move right the hell on because. <clears throat> Letitia meets with Big Trees, who um, has been in hiding ever since the fight. Latrice says she reached out to Selena to tell her she was wrong. And um, she also reached out to So Gucci, who didn't respond, but accidentally sent her a screenshot of that conversation. <laughs> been there, done that. Yeah, never I, done that. I have. Come well, I've done it. I've done it. <laughs> And guess what? It is what it is. Now. Well, it is what it is now, baby. Um, well, Latrice thinks that So Gucci feels that she was set up, um, but Latrice feels that So Gucci and that mouth is part of the problem. I normally do not stop my review to get a comment in, but I just want to say to you, Latrice, what is the even bigger problem is you having an opinion on Latrice, excuse me, on So Gucci and Selena's problem. That is familial. That's their issues. Whatever your opinion is, keep it to yourself if you're a friend like you say you is. Hmm. I hate to do that, but that really made my ass itch. I gotta, I'm gonna move forward. Um, Letitia asked Latrice, point blank and the period, did you send Selena there to put So Gucci on the floor? And Latrice denies it. Uh, Letitia says that Latrice is going to have to be mindful of who she brings around the collective. And Latrice says, no, the hell I don't. I ain't got nobody to be mindful of but myself, boo. Um, she cannot control what any woman does, and those two women need to be responsible for their own actions. Okay, I give her that. Um, Latrice says she's never done anything to these women, but they attack her relentlessly. The violin started, so did the tears, and she says, it's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. Well, I, I said, I'm girl, definitely in Memphis. <laughs> Jackson. Um, Letitia says, um, no, correction, you guys attack each other, and she feels that it can be resolved within the collective. Tree says, baby, we ain't in no coat, and I screamed again. This show damn funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so sick of trying to make it up with these hoes. No, I don't. This is, you are not our cult leader. Calm down. And uh, Letitia says, well, you in the coat now. You in the hood now, baby. And that she loves all the ladies, and she encourages Latrice to come to the peace treaty. So yes and no. I see a lot of I see some right with her logic, but I see wrong with her logic too. And the thing what that I notice about Latrice is she does not normally have people in her corner. There are people in her corner who tell her right and wrong, but I don't really think that she likes to have people in her corner who tell her right or wrong. Um, Josh. Josh was very abrasive. Uh, he was out of order at times, but he wasn't damn wrong. And now we ain't seen Josh in a couple of episodes, right? And I, uh, I th huh? He moved out. I don't, I don't want to see. Okay, what well, I'm just saying, he moved out, and y'all don't want to see him. But he wasn't lying about that damn clip, and he wasn't lying about what he saw Latrice <clears throat> going through. And you need somebody in your corner, especially if Goddess Lynch is doing all of this business that she says doing. She's becoming a millionaire, and the higher the levels, the, the bigger the devils. You need people in your corner who are going to say, yes, keep going, keep doing it. You're doing the right thing. And on the same side, when you're wrong, hey, that is wrong. You cannot do that. And I think that um, while she respects Letitia's position within the circle and the collective, it's starting to get on her damn nerves. As she said, we ain't in no damn cult. It was funny. <laughs> it is. But maybe you shouldn't be bringing around people who you know are in at odds with people in the collective. Maybe, so she said that she hung around a girl, right? Okay, you ain't been bringing her to no events. 
now you're bringing her to events. I ain't telling you who and who not to bring around, but maybe when it's collective time, maybe you don't bring her around when you see they're finna put it on the floor every time they get around each other. If you keep doing it, bitch, you are going to be the villain in this situation. And when it comes to her having such a strong opinion, you know, I hate to say that people can't have opinions on issues because certainly if that's the case, we would not be up here. But at what point does your opinion become divisive to the common goal, which is either A, bringing these women together for the betterment of the family, or B, making sure that they're never in the same room again for the betterment of the family, but the goal is for the betterment of the family. What do you guys think? I think Sammy got something to say about it. So I, come on, talk I, So, okay. Like, I, I, I like Latrice. And and th this actually, just thinking about it now, like, I kind of just had, like, a thought. Can we really, because Chase brought this to my attention when I, when I was initially saying I don't think that she wanted chaos and she wanted to fight. She was like, well, yeah, she's been cool with Selena, but she hasn't been bringing Selena around until it was clear that she had a problem with Soguchi. Point. I get that. That makes complete sense. But how are you going to tell me about what I'm doing wrong when y'all just bought the, the Taisha girl around here? She's not outside the collective, y'all. Just brought her out here for Tamara. And now y'all going to meet with a man outside of the collective. And you telling me that I don't need to be doing this shit as you doing this shit? I don't, I can't respect that. And this is why I was going to say when we got to that scene, Letitia's the glue and she's trying to hold it all together, but they need to be very careful because they're going to split apart to where it comes to the point where they don't like each other and it, it, it's hard to film together. And Letitia is playing a part in that. Whether she Yeah, she got one foot in and one foot out. And she can't, you can't, you can't dance like that. Like you, if you gonna go be up here telling this girl you can't do this, you need to not do it either. So I can't be really okay. mad at Latrice for saying like, girl, you telling me something, but this ain't no code. We, if if y'all can do it, like what, like what she's saying, it's a problem when, when I do it, but y'all can do it and say okay. Can you really? Can you I didn't think about that. Not you fighting for Latrice like you be fighting for Miss Quad Child. Are you no, just... I could. And that really, I really didn't think about that until just right. I didn't now. think about it either at all. I'm just like, shit, you kind of. I kind of see contradicting yourself. It's hypocritical. Y'all yeah. know I don't like no hypocrite. Damn, Tisha. Yeah. Going out like a sucker. Sucker free over here. Right. Um, I like what Sammy said. I didn't think about it either. I didn't um, think about that either. Oh, that was a good good explanation. Said good addition to the team. Well, this is gonna be Sammy last episode because we're not gonna come <laughs> and get Tisha, and I don't give a damn what's going Chase, on. You keep saying you know, this my hair know, is getting me. Okay. Like you know what my hair my you know what my hair is giving? What? My hair is given. It's given too. It's given very much. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, that's kind of what my hair is looking like right now. Yes. Now, Asia. Yours look better than that. Hey, now, you ain't. Now, Asia, I ain't finna sit up and feel with you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Ooh, oh, look, that, look, that's about to be my next wig. Can't wait to oh, go get God. it. I'm going to give you some oh, powder and put it together. Oh, God. <laughs> and you know what? Car Carlos said on the season two reunion, we are not here as far as the producers are concerned. So when Akisha went to complain about that dirty plate, that girl was like, don't talk to me, bitch. You ain't gonna get me fired. I ain't here. Um, somebody think, need to be I, there for um, Tamper in that moment. Um, what, look, what, uh, sorry, Latrice. I feel what um, Latrice is saying. Let me do me, let me, let me, I think we should just let these people roam around on this show as they yeah. normally would in life. Unchecked. Yes. I really think that that makes for the best TV. The moment they start being PC and just going a little more Bravo with it, it's not going to be as entertaining and we're not going to like it like we do now. Uh -huh. That That's yeah. how I honestly feel. Um, I, I don't see what Therese is doing as wrong. I think it's messy how she's moving and stuff. But at the end of the day, I don't see it as wrong because she's saying how she actually feels. She's doing stuff that she actually feels like doing. Even when it comes to like, okay, you setting them up. That's what she wanted to do. She wanted to see some mess. And everybody agree, did Asia. stuff like that before in their life. They just set up some mess. They ain't wanted to Yes, I, we've orchestrated mess. But I don't agree, Not Asia, me. with this. Not I don't agree, Asia. The I, have, I, don't I, agree. Also, I haven't ever facilitated any mess either. I have. I will watch it go down and I will see it get ready to happen, but I ain't I ain't gonna yes, see it. I don't put I've never put two or two together, but I I can say like I haven't helped the situation out. So just in 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 all of that, let all these people be be who they are and let them actually bring the real stuff to the table and let let's let Tamper just lie. Um and and 
go about the show because that's why we like it. And I like I like Latrice's <laughs> attitude. She deal with enough stuff with Daddy at home. Mm. She deal with so much that she ain't not about to come into this group and be. Well, she's gonna take it out on them. I don't know if it's her taking out on them. I think that's her real personality. You gotta let mm. these, the moment you start gatekeeping their personalities and being like, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. Don't be like this. Don't be like that. For real, and it's like just always be in their head. They stop being entertaining. Listen, and I hope they never change. Yeah. Never that's, change. That's but I'm gonna tell you when you're right and when you're wrong. On their own. And I'm gonna tell you when. But hold on, wait. Never change. But I am gonna tell you when you're right and when you're wrong. And you can be the mess, but you also the mess and you're wrong. In this situation, none of this would have occurred if she would have been mature enough to just say, you know what, friend, I apologize. It was business. It was nothing personal. You know, I love you and I always consider you. You didn't do that. You told the girl that I'm babysit other bitches' feelings and started breaking her um, husband, ex wife around the collective. No, I'm sorry. No. For me, it's and, a no. And that's what I kind of, that's what she lost me a little bit because that was an easy For me, fit. it's a no. She, hold on, Jay. I'm sorry, um, Sammy. I apologize. For me, it's a no because, yeah, I want you to be messed. Yeah, I want you to um, come and give your authentic self and be your big one. But if this is who you authentically are, it's a no. You're a messy ass woman. Oh, that was nice. Yay. Because I'm going really to be feeling some way I call it, uh, calling them bitches. Even though I, I don't mean that they that bitches. Too. Huh? I said I was going to try to do better with not doing that. Yeah, like, it's just I a love the lady. Speech, but it just feels bad It's sometimes. different. I mean, I'm still a man, and I don't mm -hmm. mean it in a malicious way, but, you know, I, I want to be more respectful because if it was no them, it would be no us. So more respectful. But I ain't rocking with you right now, Latrice. Step your pussy up. Now, I'm going to tell you that from woman to woman. Did I why you call me a bitch and tell me to step my pussy up, to be honest? <laughs> what? Well, I, I was I, I was just gonna say I agree with Asia. That's one I don't want that that Bravo blowback. Like, yeah, that's that's probably what has really like tuned me into them. Like, it's just they are really just real and wrong. raw over here. It's like you can tell that I don't feel like they're getting they're really being produced a lot. Like you can tell that they're doing a lot of this shit on their own. Okay, so awesome. I feel like even with them doing things where they're moving where we don't agree with. That they were still on on their own, figure out how to reel it back in. They just been so far. That's what I've seen. They they can do too much or overstep, but they find a way to kind of bring it back in. So hopefully they can continue to do that. But based on how this last episode starting ended, to get a little far, it's starting. Yeah, it's starting to be like okay. Get a little, like next season, I feel like it's going to be a divide depending upon how this reunion goes. And you got to think about it too, especially now that you have your involvement, like Selena. It's like that's the whole family dynamic. Like it's becoming a whole. We are seeing this You're shit going too far. I don't want to see that shit no more. Like it's. You're a going whole, too far. I don't. I remember. She's going too far. Talked about we. I we didn't really feel comfortable with the family talk as much right. that first scene. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. I will say that I. I know she's gonna agree with her mom and stuff like that, but. I don't like that. That is one thing that's continued. That's a continued story. On yeah, it was highly inappropriate and uncomfortable. And I'll be honest with you, um, I, you know, I, I, I'm not, I just, you know, I feel like with new shows, you live and you learn and they find out as they go along what works. I don't ever need to see that again. I didn't like it. I don't ever need to see that again. Next time I want to see the girls together is in therapy with the parents. And I'm, I'm okay watching that in a controlled environment. But the way that that was going, I thought that Sanjay and them, so Gucci was gonna get the fight. Yeah. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to the video. Thank you for rocking with us. Um, your bells are me, Chase, Asia. Can I call you a bell, Sammy? You can call me a bell. The bell. As He's I a bell. Oh, <laughs> no, no, I won't be calling you that. No, the bell, Sammy, and our other bell, Shantae. Um, and also, I want to say that we have a more regular, 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 margarita, reader, 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 more regular. Uh, give me one margarita. I'm gonna be watching the Bell Collective. Um, a more regular schedule, so we will be pumping out the reviews quicker to the actual air date. So you'll be getting them on the weekend as opposed to as opposed to during the week. Moving forward, um, there's also the Real Housewives of Atlanta on Mondays. New York is going to be premiering with a brand new host. I won't say who, and don't you guys say who? But we got a brand new host to the Collective, to the host Collective, honey. Or on Tuesday. Yesterday. Oh, he said on the show? Yeah. Who is he? Can say it. So Jamie, Jamie finally got a promotion. Who? Yeah, girl, Jamie. Jamie finally got a promotion, and uh, we encourage you to watch. Because that's going to be interesting in and of itself. 
So the Real Housewives of New York and the Lunch and Lean Live every Thursdays, 12 p.m. Eastern, hosted by me and whoever my guest is for the weekend. I have a guest this weekend that's going to be Muy Caliente. With that being said, we'll move right along to the final scene because it's time for the peace treaty, you guys. And the ladies arrive, and Aikisha arrives in sweats just in case she needs to move around and she knows her bones is a little brittle. I don't think she said that, but I did. Uh, but just in case she needs to move around like the last event. And thus continues the history of Aikisha throwing shade at Letitia events. Um, Letitia starts off immediately jumping into the conversation about the fight and says at the end of the day, they came together um, and put differences aside to assist So Gucci after she was attacked by an outsider. So, um, not attacked by outsider. Well, that's what they said. Uh -huh. Um, so it seems to me that amongst the cast, if there was a vote, because a lot of people were on social media saying, Oh, Selena should be added to the show, Selena should be added to the show. It seems to me that the majority of the cast don't want her. There. So Gucci definitely don't want her there, Letitia don't want her there. Marie hasn't really voiced an opinion. Aisha definitely does not want her there. And then we know Tambra, Cherie, and Latrice will love her there. So I guess the swing vote will be Marie, but the way that they speak of her, they rarely mention her name. They didn't mention her all last season by name, but this season they're going back to not mentioning her by name after that fight. I think they were okay with it. I think the fight is what really washed, wants, makes them wash their hands with her. Yeah. Um, and then the girls break off Tash thing because Letitia feels like when the girls get an audience, they do tricks and shows. And I said, I agree with you, Big Tish. All right. So Marie and Tambor are talking. And Tambor was like, Well, I don't know why we sitting over here, girl. I ain't got no problem with you. No, I love you, Marie. Thank away, Marie. I love you. I ain't got no problem with you. And Marie was like, Girl, I'm going to wear your ass out. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I just felt so bad. It was like, you know how they say, like, leave the land to slaughter? Like, it was just mm -hmm. like, Oh my God, she has no clue. This girl has really been digging in her business like this. Um, Marie knows that Tambra is going to be shocked, even though it's her own tea and play the victim. And Marie tells Tambra that her and Letitia met with a man who told them that he is he was engaged to Tambra around 2018. I didn't get the dates right, but I do remember 2018. Tambra thought that they were sisters, um, and that she says to Marie that this man tried to ruin her life because she walked away. He also wanted, uh, Marie says he also wants the collectors to know, just when you thought it was over, he also wants the collectors to know that Tambra is a compulsive liar and she fabricates her life. Uh, Tambra says, well, he's been to jail. And Marie says, yeah, I know he was bringing, he brought the court documents to prove that um, they were dismissed and that he's telling the truth. Tambra gets up and uh, says that Marie should know her, but Marie isn't buying it because Marie does not know her. Everything that she says she feels like is a lie. Uh, Tambra doesn't feel that this is protecting the collective as Letitia just mentioned not too long ago. And uh, <laughs> what? So, my head is so big, girl. Anyway, uh, mm -hmm. Tambra says um, that she doesn't feel like this is protecting the collective and that she spent a very long time in court. I can't believe everybody popped off like that. <laughs> <laughs> Tamper has spent a very long time in court fighting this man. And Marie says, I don't know why it was all thrown out. Tamper says, you're going to be hearing from my lawyer, bitch. And Marie was like, now, lawyers, now, wait a minute. What you got to get the... Now, wait a minute. We just filmed a TV show. I'm only going to give to everything that you're saying. I'm slandering you. I'm doing all of this. I'm definitely doing my big one. You want to get your lawyer? You go, what, girl, what? what, what? She was really confused, y'all. She was really confused. Marie said... Oh. <laughs> do you know what we're here to do i'm here to tell you down girl i'm not here to build you up now you want to get your lawyers involved <laughs> y'all we couldn't even get latisha versus Akisha because that damn fight was so good i didn't write nothing down about it um latisha said she had to go pick uh, said she had to go pick up her churn and latisha was like bye <laughs> you can go um what did you guys think about that whole scene like that was insane and um, damn, I know Tamper be lying, but I kind of felt bad for her in that, in that moment. I did a little bit. If the man is, is abusive or whatever it was that he was doing to her, she had to get court orders. She had to do all of this stuff. 
what again what do i need and do i get from putting someone through that trauma and then making them prove to me that they're telling the truth about a traumatic experience whether it was thrown out or not she still took them she had to take them to court and file charges in order for them to be thrown out you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. so regardless of whether they were frivolous or not she felt a type of way to do that so i personally wouldn't even have brought it up but maybe you know marie just feel like the girl was trying to lie about that too i don't know y'all what y'all think about that because that's really just seemed too much for me i don't have nothing much to say but if marie if if there was ever a case for is marie a bully episode seven does not help her case yeah i i don't know i just i didn't i didn't like it for for leticia and marie especially for her to lead the conversation with we not gonna let the outsider attack, and you know your homegirl finna go to the table number one <laughs> and tell Tamra all about the outside and the information that y'all got. So I didn't get what they, what they were doing with that, but it, you do make a point. Like even if it was dismissed, the process started for a reason. So clearly Tamra felt like she had to do these things, and like I said earlier, I don't understand Marie taking this man's word. I don't care what he showed you, like. He specifically came out of his mouth and told you he didn't like that he saw her on TV with Damon. So clearly he was already out for revenge. I can't listen to nothing you got to say because now I don't know what's real. I don't know because you clearly want to attack her because you feel away. So are you going to give me truthful information? Or are you just going to give me stuff that I'm going to go take to the TV and run down with her? But honestly, I don't think Marie cared. Oh, no. I don't think she cared whether it was true, false. Look, he said it, so I'm going to tell you. But it's very fair. I heard it, so I repeated it. That's what she gave. Like, I don't care if it's true or not, but bitch, he said it. And sorry, girl, he said it, and you finna hear what he said in front of these cameras. So it, it just, uh, but I mm -hmm. can't say, I cannot say. I'm more so on the side of the principle based on y'all being hypocrites because y'all are doing one thing that y'all are saying y'all against. I can't say I feel bad for Tamara because, girl, you've been lying. You've lied to us. You've lied on us, in front of us. So I can't feel bad. Like, if you, if you weren't a liar, then... They wouldn't have to do it. They wouldn't do it. You would have something to stand on. So you could be telling the God honest truth. But now people side on you because you've been lying so much about things that you didn't have to lie about. They didn't bother Tamara at all first season. And they didn't start really poking around with her until... Taisha came around, and then the whole Aikisha calling them ugly situation came up. They really left Tambra alone. 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 Um, I can't say she didn't bring it on herself, but... That's what I'm saying. That's again, I, I think like... Marie has a propensity to go too far. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm just... That's why I can't feel... I, I don't like the, the like Karen, what Karen called the gangbangs. I don't I don't like them. But when you when you bring it on your damn self... What's <laughs> <laughs> like, one more in the gang? Yeah, I can't feel bad for you. And you you did it multiple times. I mean, you had you had a chance to stop. Oh, like you. <laughs> That's Your the man stop. of the hot comments. But you, you had a you had a oh. you had a chance to stop, and you didn't stop. Like you continued to lie, and so I mean, you you did it to yourself, homegirl. I would have took it too. Asia, I just. I feel a few ways about it, but the biggest thing that I want to say is like if it was a domestic violent situation or something like that, I could see Tamra. I understand Tamra's response, and in that regard, if it was something like that, I I feel bad. But okay, even when it came to like the stuff being dismissed, they would when COVID came around, like we really don't know. They was getting rid of people charges left and right, so. You don't even know like how triggering a situation like that could be to her because we don't know the story. We really don't know exactly what was happening or what was going on. Um, so in that regard, I do feel bad because that just whether or not she's a bad person, something bad prop happened to her when it came to that guy, clearly. And it triggered it wasn't her. wasn't pleasant, yeah. I just and when you talk about jail and prison stuff, it just it's triggering to me. That gives somebody PTSD. So it's definitely Marie doing to someone else what people have done to her in the past and unwarranted mm -hmm. because her lying all the time doesn't warrant you bringing in an abusive past. Like that is just hurtful. It, it's going to break anybody down and you got to be careful about how you, who you break down because you got you don't know how they're going to come back at you. 
And uh, so then I asked the question one last time. I ask you, is it a coincidence? Is Maria bully? She mean. <laughs> is she a bully? I, mean, I won't say bully. I still won't say bully. Okay, no. I'm I'm not I'm not it I think it's a question that deserves to be asked at this point after watching this episode. So I don't think the question is out of bounds. For me right now, I'm gonna vote a hesitant no. But this situation clearly is not over. And um I don't know. Right now I'm gonna say I hesitant to know, but I got my eye on you, Marie Monroe. Sammy? Yeah. I, I, I'm going I'm to grow with you as a hesitant no. Only because, like, like Adrian said, what she's doing is very, the bully tendencies, but it's not just unprovoked. Because I would feel a way too if you lied on me, lied to me, and we're supposed to be cool like that. I'm not going to go as, you know, to the Marie list, but I'm going to, you're going to get a side eye. I'm not going to fuck with you the way I did before because now I don't know how to handle you because I don't know how to, I can't trust you. So I, I, get, I get why Marie feels the way. I just don't get why she's going about it the way she is, especially being such a big businesswoman with so many things at stake. Like, you know these girls going to play dirty. You watch it happen. And, and you playing with a girl like Tamara, who you know is sitting over here just lying and doing the most. So what do you think she finna, she finna get your ass back? Now, how? I don't know. But you already I know she ain't no good. nobody who got their own radio show. Because you're not and, about to get another outlet to talk shit about me. The midday diva, baby, she gonna tear Marie ass up. The midday diva, uh, <laughs> Tamara Sharif, uh, 97 in the hottest city of Jixion. Cause what is that? <laughs> I will say though, I'm looking forward to a Tamra, a Tamra West Side Tam blow up. I like what she get when she get. Oh, it's married. coming, baby. When, when she not, when it was not that little pee, that little annoying ass laugh and that talking she do when, when she get West Side Tam. I'm here for that. And Maybe it's so that's what we need. Maybe we need West Side Tam and not Tamra Sharif. Well, Maybe we need I was going to say it's so sad because last season, Sammy, they kept poking with her, right? And then West Side Tam was going to beat Aikisha ass. And everybody was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Is that like is that what you needed? Like I'm that is what they that is what they be wanting from women. Y'all be wanting us to just be oh just be y'all to be y'all. Okay. And and to be honest, like we're always told to sit down and act like a lady, but half the time we not no lady. We we who we are. We who we were raised to be. We don't like that BS. We pay. Oh, she's just throwing shade. She know what she doing. And we mask with ladylike tendencies because we ain't no weak, you know, little hoes. But we mask it for the TV and check and all that other stuff. But baby, when, you say, take that face off. when that face come off, Tamara better stop lying. She got my man, my man, my man, my uh, man. Whatever Candy said. And if she don't want greedy, she needs to let him go so somebody else can snatch him. I'm not saying me. Me, it's me. But somebody. Y'all really like that? I'm ready to go to war about it. Okay. That's, a, that's a man, Asian. I'll, that was going to really talk. Man. A man. Yeah, I guess so. I guess he, I can see why people like him. I do. I can. Your time. <laughs> okay. Okay, Chase. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Anyway, with that being said, I want to thank you guys for rocking with us. Um, we love the Bell Collective, and we love that you guys right. had such a warm response to us the last episode with the breakdown that we did as well as a review and you brought with us all of that and gave us wonderful feedback and i appreciate that um so hopefully we get that and even more this time we want to thank carlos for being shot you know shouting us out um so gucci for peeping us because we peeped that so gucci peeps um i want to thank asia i want to thank you sammy for joining the collective as well as our other host shante not so gucci shante cap tay tay everybody cap tay tay cap tay tay shante Cap Tay Tay is a part of this, is a part of the collective. Oh, Cap Tay Tay. Yes. Who is uh, she's part of the collective. Shante. And um, yeah, so with that being said, like and subscribe. Make sure that you tune in to us throughout the week Monday, Atlanta. Tuesdays are now going to be New York. Thursdays at Lunch and Lean Live with me, um, as well as the Bell Collective. And um, with that, um, did you guys have anything you want to say before we bid them adieu? 
I just want to say, did y'all see that Summer House got renewed? Summer House Martha's been your game. Summer House got renewed, yeah. so we got another. Like, we get another check, you guys. You know, yeah. listen, hey, you really? know, you know what I'm saying. With that being said, hopefully the Bell Collector gets renewed too, because I don't know what I'm gonna do in my life. I'm gonna be sick if they get canceled. I'm gonna be real sick. We just be, got to start I'm gonna be doing it, y'all. <laughs> All right. Well, with that being said, thank you for tuning in. And um, a word to the wise: stand up, everybody, business, and don't be no Marie Monroe. <laughs> All right. We'll holler at you. Good night. Bye.